What's going on, everybody? Welcome to Learn With Me on Thursday. I just made that up. I have no idea what I was going to call it, to be honest. So, I got this grading tool that I've used for a while. And no, it does not alter the card in any way. Um, it's what I use for my centering percentages. Now, have you ever looked at a PSA 10 in the slab and like, wow, that's really off-centered? Um, I'm not too sure how they got that grade type deal, but if you go on P a PSA's website, it tells you the deviance is you're allowed for centering on front and back. And, you know, for years, I always sat there wondering, like, how in the heck is that a 60-40 and all this? And, you know, it's just one of those things. Well, there's some smart people out there a long time ago. Let me see if he has his name on his package. Here we go. It's called uh, Gem Mint Tools, and you can go email them gemmintools at gmail.com or look it up. I've used this for a long time. You get one of these nice little cloth things, too, you can use to wipe with, but I don't use that. A little shimmy piece. You get a little card that tells you what the numbers are with what your centering is supposed to be and stuff like that. I don't really use this per se as like 100% guidance true because I come out with a lot of 6.4, which is a 60.40. And I can't remember. I think that's a PSA 9 if I remember right. But your bold numbers are what get you a 9 or better is what he's saying. But I think you have to have a 6.5, 55, 45 if I remember right for PSA 10s. But you'd have to check the site. I don't recall offhand. Um, I usually have to really go back and look because everybody has different standards across the board. But inside the package, you also get two grading tools. I know it's kind of hard to see. And if I, they have little lines and stuff on it. So I'm going to pull this one up first. This is the one I like the best because I think it stands out more. You have all these numbers. And I'll go like this so you can see. You can see all the numbers, 1 through 10 on the sides and everything. And you can look at, you know... All kinds of different aspects of the card onto it. And it's the same thing with this here. Uh, this is just a thicker uh, one as well, too. Now, you're supposed to have your card to top loader, but uh, to be honest, I usually will do them in a sleeve. And it's harder to do by what I'm going to show you guys because i got to sit here and line up. What I normally do is I have it laying down on the mat like this, and then I'll... I'll put it up here. Then I'll usually like put this on top and I'm lining it up and looking it down. And I get my numbers. Now I already know what the numbers are on these two cards because I had to look them up. So I'm going to try to get it as perfect as I can. So Bowman, we all know Nico Horner. Oh, hold on. Let me refocus. Sorry, sorry. Nico Horner. You guys can already tell it's us centered left or right. So I mean, when you put this on a little tool here, I don't know what this costs. I think it was like five, ten bucks. And it's harder to do it with me on it up like this. So I'm going to try to get as perfect as I can into this square and holding it there. So you have to line the card up like it would be inside here. So you got all these crazy things on to it, showing you with little arrows and everything else. But if you go with the dial lines on the Nico Horner. Let me see if I can get it right again. All right, I was coming up with left and right being a 6-4 when I did mine, but that just gives you an idea. It's a 60-40. Yep, it should be at least a 9 on centering if you go in BGS standards on to by using the tool. But it kind of gives you an idea, you know, where you're going on to. And if you get, like, some of the older vintage cards, you can really tell a difference because they'll be starting to shift like this. And your edge will be like a 1 on one side, and you'll have like an 8 or a 9 on the other. And you're like, how am I an 8-1? Eight, one? Well, an 8-1 eight, is 89-11. So, you know where your centering is kind of add on to. I mostly was using this on last year's Prism cards, which, you know, um, is what I was doing. Like, if I was trying to use this for a Beckett set, I was like, man... You know, I got a little bit of waiting on my corners because we know it's contenders. There's going to be waiting probably more than likely somewhere on around here where this is at, the blue, or somewhere along here. I'd have to look it over. 
So I'm like, dang, I'm already going to have probably a nine for like corners or edges. You don't want another nine across the board. So I would sit there and line this puppy up. And I mean, when you're eyeballing this, what do you think? You think that's perfect centering? It looks pretty perfect, doesn't it? I mean, to the naked eye and somebody that's not doing this all the time, they're going to call that perfect left and right. It's really not. And when I did this, it should come out to like a 4-4, something like that offhand. But it was something, let me see if I can find it here. There it is, 4-3. So it was really a 4-3, which is a 57-43 according to their scale. Still pretty good overall. But that should put me in about a nine five. Man, sorry guys, freaking camera man. It should be like a like a nine five would be my guesstimate onto something like that. And when you, I don't, I don't have any prism raws laying here. I don't believe those were the hardest last year because of all the um stuff that was going on with prism. I thought I had a. Prism Raw laying up here, but her sleeve for this. Oh, it's down here. Boom. So, this is where it really goes into play. But this is what I really used it on. You gotta really have this laid down. Tremont Waters. Once I get a good focus on it again, bam. By looking at it, it looks to me like off centered left or right. So when I was putting this on to it, I mean, you got to use all aspects of this card because there's different things to look at centering on. You have these black pieces, as you can see where I'm pointing. Well, I guess you can't really see. If you see where that is, that little black piece here, and that black piece here, that's usually your biggest part to make sure that look close to being even. You have your side here, your side here, here, here. From here to here, here to here. I mean, there was just so much. And then on your backs, too, basically look at the back. You can tell that's all centered because look, right there. So, I mean, you really had to play into this big time and know who's going to grade harder onto centering. Like PSA's back centering, they're, they're more lenient than uh, Beckett is. So when you start looking at stuff like this, you start going over the card with this. You start getting an idea where different pieces of the centering is. You can't onto something like this here just look from here to here to here to here because that looks almost perfect. When you go from here to here to here to here to here, it's off. And if I remember right, this is why I have to do it more on a black mat and everything so I can see better. So going across here, I would call this like a 7-5 for the top piece. And it's probably not even going to be on here. Oh, yeah, it is. That's a 58-42, they're saying. And for Beckett, that's pretty bad. Going across the other way, I think it was like a 4-5 four, four or something like that. So it just gives you an idea of like where your centering is at onto the card, how bad you're off. And what I learned to do last year for Prism was I got a PSA 10s. I put this little thing onto it. I marked down exactly where I saw everything at. And I went as that being the lowest standard if I wanted to send a card in. So if you're new in the grading and you're like, man, I don't know why this card has gotten this grade and all this stuff here. You're like, look at the centering. It's perfect. I'm telling you, nine times out of ten, it's probably not perfect. Because they're using stuff like this that's so micro to sit there and tell going across on what your centering is. And I use all kinds of stuff because I'm looking at this line here, making sure it's pretty much cutting the card in half. That's cutting it in half to when I line this up. It's best, like I said, you get your card. I got a black piece of uh, rubber foam that I use down here. And I'll take it, I'll lay this sucker onto it, I will line it up like jet perfect onto it. And I do, they say to use a top loader, but I don't like using the top loader. I'll just have it in a sleeve and I just lay it on top like this here. And I just go over it completely. And once I make sure that whole thing is all inside that little black box, that's when I start taking numbers out to see where 
I'm at on percentages, but I also have a good idea of how that card's going to grade centering. So, like I said, a lot of people ask me about what do you do with your grading and all that stuff like that there. This is what I use for centering, but from doing orders every month, and sometimes multiple months, I don't really use this that much anymore unless I'm really uncertain on a new card, just so I can try to find out where I'm laying at onto everything offhand. I believe they sell these on eBay. They might have them on Amazon. I don't know the prices anymore. I got, like I said, this is an older tool that I got from them a long time ago. I think about a year or two ago, maybe even longer. Um, and this thing here really helped guide me on learning what I'm looking at for centering. Because when you start doing, say I have 30 cards I want to send to PSA. And I think a couple of you guys that I showed you how I do stuff, you're like, wow, why is this an hour and a half, two hour video? He's only doing 30 cards. Well, I eliminate very quickly maybe 10 cards. I got to get 10 more in my order because I want to maximize what I got going in to help cover fees and stuff like that, plus what I'm keeping in my own personal collection. That's how I think about it. You know, these are PC cards that I want to keep for either investment purposes or my own collection. I want to send about 10 cards in that I can sell help cover the fees to grade those cards and maybe even if those gem out it'll help cover what i spent into those cards itself too so that's my thinking like business wise on how i do that but when i set used to sit there and i would go over these cards over and over and over again i started getting used to it and i noticed with bowman i probably should have used it this year i thought my eyes were a lot better and my centering was just horrible on that stuff so if you're new to grading, look at something like this to use, and just to give you the option of looking at it, trying to figure it out, like, man, I think I'm off here a little bit, or it looks perfect, and when you line it up, it's really not. Don't go into it thinking your mentality is, oh, it's perfect card. Look at it. It's lined up. you got to make sure you're in that box and everything. It takes, you know, sometimes 30 seconds to line that card up. You're not always going to get in like under 10 seconds, trust me. I'm always second guessing. I lay it there. And then what I do is I start looking at that line. It went this way, this way, making sure it cuts it out. And then I start looking at different pieces of the card going across. Because there's different areas on there that might not make it look centered. Or, you know, the card overall, there's other parts of it that's making it look centered. And I'm missing a piece of it. Just like that prism card where I was showing you on the bottom. The two little black pieces, and then on the back, how it's really off center as well, too. Take centering front, and you need centering back. Who are you mailing it to? Are you mailing it to SGC? Hopefully not. DSA, Beckett. Because everybody has different standards of what they look for for a gem mint card. You gotta do your research on that piece there, too. So again, this was just more of something I wanted to show everybody. I've been meaning to do a video on this. Um, I keep this in my drawer with my magnifying glasses, my jeweler tool, and all that stuff there just so I can look cards over. I don't want to waste time. I don't want to waste money submitting cards. I feel, I know some people are like, oh, well, eights are cool, you know. I, to me, an eight makes me feel horrible unless it's an older card. If I'm getting within the last three, four years an eight in a card, I, I'm, I'm embarrassed by it. I am. I take pride in the look of my stuff over to where... I spent a lot of time on my, or my gradings to where I'm like, man, I can't believe I got an 8 on this. How the heck, what did I miss? 9s, 10s, I'm happy with. I really am. 10s, I'm ecstatic. But that's just one of the things I used. Figured I'd show it to everybody. It's my little secret grading tool. I don't know how many people knew this even existed. But I suggest if you're new to grading and you can't figure out why you're getting bad grades and stuff like that back, and you're sure the surface corners and edges were all perfect, Grab a hold of that because what they're looking at for centering could be off and you just got to figure it out. It takes a while, but once you figure out what they're looking for in centering, it can save you a ton of money and it can make you a ton of money. All right, everybody. See you live tomorrow night. We'll do some Chronicle Soccer team all. Talk to y'all later.